the Himalayas. Not just a place in National Geographic or an adventurous dream, this is actually a super affordable destination to visit and an out of this world experience. The Himalayas is a mountain range in Asia with some of the world's highest peaks like Mount Everest. We'll be exploring the Indian side of it, especially Leh Ladakh and share everything you need to know when planning to visit. From preparing and how to get there, acclimatization to living at 3,500 meters and what it's like living there. Is it even possible to work from there as a digital nomad? The Himalayas stretch a distance of 2,400 kilometers between five countries, India, Nepal, China, Tibet and Bhutan. But before we get to the Himalayas, we have some prep to do because altitude sickness is a real thing. Printed all the documents that we needed. Some things people suggested we take with to help with the altitude adjustment. We actually didn't end up needing to buy all this stuff in Delhi. Leh literally has everything you need. Clothes, medicine, everyday stuff and it's all really affordable. But more on that later in the video. Delhi is rough. <laughs> a combination of smells, food and sweat and animals and curry and like your, you go through all the emotions of smells when you drive through the streets. It is absolutely crazy. Time to pack. So we are heading up to Leh in Ladakh during July, which is summer slash monsoon season, but maximum degrees is 11 degrees and minimum is 2 at night. In winter, it is usually minus 8 degrees to minus 30 degrees, but it never really gets more than 20 degrees. For packing, I would suggest a little bit of everything. Long pants, short pants, t-shirts, light long sleeve shirt, a jersey or two, a down jacket or leather jacket for the rain, hiking clothes, closed comfortable shoes because the roads can be wet or have cow poop, sunscreen, hat, beanie, light scarf, backpack. But if you forget anything, you can get any of it in Leh. Apparently there's only four ATMs. We drew money a few times in Leh, but the machines often ran out of cash or don't work. So take cash with you, but you can draw money there when you need to. It's 3 a.m. and we are on the way to the airport. It is a raining 3 a.m. in Delhi and it is busy. So busy for 3 a.m. Two people are awake. Kept waking up being like, oh, we have to go, we have to go, we have to go. But now we're going. What a morning. There's a security check even before you get into the airport and then another one inside. That was the most insane security check we've ever done. We unpacked all our bags and almost took off the drone. Oh, they intense. If you ever fly from Delhi Airport, like come extra early because the queues to check in along the terminals are confusing. I mean, we fly a lot and this was a hard. There's two ways to get to Leh in the duck. You can either drive or fly. Driving is much cheaper but over a thousand kilometers and it will take two days. The road is very very dangerous at times. It is the Himalayas. If you drive yourself you can make a really nice road trip out of it but the roads are not for inexperienced drivers. Buses are the cheapest option at around $18 but definitely not the most comfortable. Lasting 32 to 36 hours these are the type of buses and once again the roads are very scary. Flying is around 1 hour and 30 minutes from Delhi. There's various flights a day but it is a bit more expensive. Delhi to Leh is around $40 to $130 and Leh to Delhi $100 to $250. We are so happy that we ended up flying to Leh and back. Landing at 3.5 so we basically the whole flight going up. The flying is definitely different. You can really feel the pressure and like your head goes and your, your ears pop a lot more. So we're literally flying in between the mountains. It is so crazy. We're about to land. We're still going up and up. We now have 3,000. We still have another 500 to go. 88% that oxygen in. It's supposed to be? 99. Time for acclimatization to start. This is basically the same height as the top of Mount Fuji. My heart rate is 20 beats higher than usual. It's almost 100. It's 110. 110. I definitely do feel a little bit. I feel a little drowsy, a little walking up the hill. It's beautiful. It's really Very nice beautiful. Weather. Also, landing here, we have no internet. We have Indian SIM cards, but no reception. I organize pick up from the hotel because there's not really taxis here or people like that. Oh. It's the one place in India where people don't ask you if you want to live. Yeah, lovely meeting you. They suggest that when you arrive in Leh, that you take two days to rest and acclimatize, especially if you're planning to go on adventures like the biking trip we are doing. So we checked out into Indus River Camp, link below. I cannot recommend this place enough. 
When acclimatizing to higher altitudes, some people do get a little sick so it is best to be comfortable, not have to worry much about anything and have people around you that speak English and can help you if need be. This was the best place to acclimatize and the food was so delicious and fresh. We got some fresh fruit, delicious juice. <laughs> it has mountain drink, it has cardamom, sapphire and cinnamon in it. It's like a tea. Wow. It's good. Never tasted anything like it. It has a beautiful restaurant and activities, places to sit and relax while looking at the river and our cabin. It is about 120 to 150 dollars per night, including some meals. It is completely fogged up and misty right now, but behind me, the mountains is actually covered in snow. It's so beautiful. It's about 40 acres, which is quite big, and you can walk around. And there's a bunch of cows, of course. So why is it so important to acclimatize? At sea level, where around most of us live, there's 20.9% oxygen. But as you go high in elevation, the oxygen gets less. So here at 3,500 meters where we are in Leh, you have 35% less oxygen than you're used to. And when we go on the biking trip in a few days, we'll be at 5,500 meters above sea level, almost the same height as Everest Base Camp or the top of Kilimanjaro. There we'd have less than 50% of the usual oxygen with only 10.3% oxygen. But on top of that, there's also less air pressure, which is used to drive the gases from your lungs to your red blood cells, which gives oxygen to the rest of the body. The so higher you go, the harder it is for the body to take up oxygen because there's less and also to pump it to the various cells in the body because of the pressure which leads to altitude sickness and can start with simple things such as a headache, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, short of breath, loss of appetite, problems sleeping and can escalate to confusion, inability to walk, coma and death. But if you acclimatize well and rest, you'll be fine. Tired, sleepy, I felt like quite hazy. You also need to go to the bathroom the whole time, pee quite a lot at a high altitude because your body tries and get rid of any excess weight so it can pump blood to more places. I'm not 100% sure how it works but there's a reason for that. I also feel like my face is swollen. We are working for lunch. My heart rate is 142. I ran like five meters and I'm like... <sighs> Things you can do to help you adjust to the high altitude is one, stay hydrated. We wanted coffee this morning and the manager at the hotel was like, rather not. Sip on water and teas. Rest. Don't exert yourself or do strenuous activities like running. Keep moving your body with short walks, but I wanted to do kayaking in the morning and they once again said, rather not. Something very important here is SIM cards. So your SIM card won't work even if you bought it in India. The dark because it's bordered by China and Pakistan, the security is quite hectic. There's a lot of military bases here and a lot of military personnel. It's also a military airport where you land. You have to buy a SIM card here so they can control it and see the communication. And you're actually also not allowed to bring a satellite phone. I don't know if it's a specific satellite phone, but I just saw at the airport that you have to hand in your satellite phone. A tip, get SIM cards from two different service providers for in case one of the cell towers does go out. During the month, the electricity did go out two or three times for two to three hours. It's so crazy. I think in a way we still can't actually believe that we are in the Himalayas. Like you look at the pictures in the books that they have, because we haven't explored much. And it's like literally that stuff that you read about as a kid, like in National Geographic or so, like on Discovery Channel. We never take it for granted ever. We always so grateful for the places we get to see. It takes a lot of work and it's, it's not always easy. You want to save us money and stuff. It's always really worth it and we're always very grateful to be able to do the stuff that we only ever dreamed of, really. We've probably slept, I don't know, 14 hours of the 24 hours or more. We're so tired, we just keep sleeping. He's tired, struggles to sleep. He slept when we got here, then he slept again in the afternoon, then he slept again in the afternoon, and then I fell asleep immediately. So I was gonna do a challenge to carry my bag and see what his heart rate will be at the end. Muscles are weaker. 160. 160. <laughs> now we have to see what it's actually like living in Le and if it's actually possible for us to work here. First accommodation. During the month, we stayed in a lot of different hotels. They were all around $30 a night for two people and included breakfast and dinner. This was in peak season, like Hotel Mandala, Royal Heritage Resort, and our favorite with the best food, Hotel Rezingla. The places were all super comfortable, great internet, safe, beautiful areas outside to chill, nice seas, and a 10 minute walk to the center of town. Just remember, a lot of hotels and restaurants close during winter. This is our view. It's a little vegetable garden. Everybody has a vegetable garden somewhere. This is our room. Bed, table, chairs, and a bathroom. So the electricity just went out. I'm not sure if it is because of the rain, but it stopped raining. I pretty much always pack out. If we stay at a place for longer than a day, we see you for three nights. 
it just makes it so much easier to like feel like you have life i live in packing cubes so it's easy to unpack i mean i just unpack my packing cubes really closet done we're doing our acclimatization works yeah. It's, like, it's not good to exert yourself, but it's good to walk a little. So we're walking this hill. <laughs> Instant headache. <laughs> we went up 300 meters where we're staying now. We walked so much in Leh and it was the best walks. So beautiful. People, dogs and cows everywhere. There's a lot of stray and injured animals here. For every 10 new subscribers to this channel, we feed or donate a meal to a stray animal. So please subscribe to help more. Thank you. We are here in the market in Leh and it is insane. You can really come here and buy everything you need from like warm tops, down jackets, trekking shoes, backpacks, gloves, scarves, and the prices are so good. Like little to bed, all these beautiful clothing, these Pashmir items. This place is so beautiful. It's literally everything I imagined and more. So the pharmacy is really great. It has everything you need from amazing face products to sunscreen to medicines to body wash, like such good stuff. For headache and soreness of body muscles, we got some nausea pills, we got a bunch of electrolytes packets, a bunch of them. This is for acclimatization, you can take it for three days, morning and evening. Hopefully we don't need it, but we'll take it with for in case. Vitamin C. And I got some body wash. I got all these meds for 175 rand. Just got like cookies, crisps, salty things for when you're nauseous, it's always nice. Everything here is so swollen from the altitude. Himalayan salts. 200 rupees, one kg. 100 rand for 400 grams of almonds and cashews. We have such good flavor. Almond sneakers, strawberry sneakers, pistachio sneakers. You can comfortably work at your hotel, but there's also plenty of cafes to work from with beautiful views, great internet and really affordable food and drinks. Favorites to work from Nas Cafe, Wondrous Terrace and Cafe, Don Tang Restaurant and our favorite, the Coffee Lounge. We are in the Lay Market and it is insane to have these rooftops we can sit and have coffee and the Wi-Fi is really really good. We have Wi-Fi here of 150 megabytes. <laughs> this is a pretty good work view and pretty good internet. What do you call it? Creamy lollipop chicken. Something else. Yeah. It's, it's 150 rupees. Uh, cappuccino is 120. The pizza is 250. There's places to get your laundry done at really affordable prices. I'm telling Jared that I think this is one of my favorite places in the world so far. This Venice in Italy, Cappadocia in Turkey, Nozawa Onsen in Japan, Ili Island. It's like it's magic to try and stay sort of kind of fit, especially when you can't do much exercise and can't find spaces. It's plenty. In the next video, we start our thousand kilometer biking trip across the Himalayas, one of the most insane and best things we've done to date. Subscribe to not miss it and to feed astray. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching.